All right, it's keyword research tutorial part three. And this time we'll have a look at all of these columns here. Now, as I've already shown in the video before is you can always click on this small arrow. It doesn't matter which column you go to. There's always this small arrow. You can click on that, go to columns and then select which ones you want to display. So let's just call up one of them here, which is the keyword monthly searches. And then let me just go from left to right, start explaining these columns. Some of them we've already covered. So the first one is for um, symbols, for icons, that is tags that you assign yourself to the keywords. And again, this is just for your own um, sorting of the keywords. So you can select, um, you can select tags whenever you do, whenever you expand a search or you can select a single or multiple that's holding down control and clicking on several multiple keywords and then simply go to this tag menu and select a color to get those keywords tagged all right that's the manual way of doing it uh, what you also have is whenever you see a diamond here next to the keyword that means it has an extremely high niche value so diamond keywords are always worth a second look and the key icon is the final one and that is simply the seed keyword so I started the, the search here with the keyword knitting and this is just marked with this key symbol alright next we have the niche value and we've already talked about this niche value is the search volume of a keyword divided by the competition strength alright search volume divided by competition strength and the higher that number the better the niche value then we have if you call this up the monthly search volume and the reason I call this up to display the monthly search volume is that this might be the value that you're more familiar with than the search volumes over here so I'll get back to that in a second next we have the keyword itself that's pretty self-explanatory and then we have visitors and competition level for rankings 1 to 3, rankings 4 to 7, and rankings 8 to 10. So basically, if you look at the results page for this keyword in Google, we have visitor and competition values for the top rankings, for the medium or the middle of the page rankings, and for the bottom of the page rankings. Now, these numbers here are the actual visitors you can expect if you get, in this case, if you get to the number one position. Actual visitors you can expect in the middle of the page actual visitors you can expect at the end of the page and these are daily values and over here this is the exact match monthly search volume all right so here you can see a keyword that gets 40,000 searches a month if you get to the top spot you will likely get 600 visitors a day something around that and then we have the ranking strength and I talked about those in more detail in the previous video so if you want to Get more detail on that re-watch the video before this one the, the second keyword research video okay then we have the column over here domains this searches for free keyword domains so keyword domains that aren't occupied yet and it searches for com and net domains for example if you see here for how to knit a hat it says net and that means that how to knit a hat net is a free domain and you can actually click on this link here to open up Namecheap and register the domain right away. Now, if you see something like this, com with a hyphenation in between, it means that uh, knitting stitches, if it's written together, knit knittingstitches.com is taken, but knitting hyphen stitches is still free. Okay, the same goes for net with hyphenation. All right, so now that we've covered the standard view here, let's call up some new columns. And I'm going to eliminate some of the columns here just to make sure that uh, we that that not everything gets squashed up. Okay, so we have uh, available blog spot. I'll get rid of the domains as well. AdWords CPC, AdWords competition. Let's look at those two as well. Okay, so available blog spot. This checks whether a blogspot or blogger domain, same thing, um, is free for this keyword. So blogger, if you're not familiar, is a free blogging platform. And this symbol here means that how to knit a hat.blogspot.com is still free. So you could go over to blogger right now and register a free blog called how to knit a hat. 
Um, so that is, if you want to work with completely free sites, you can check out um, what blogger domains are still free. Then we have CPC, cost per click, estimation and competition. This is AdWords competition. This is directly, this is the Google data itself. This data is notoriously imprecise, just as a warning, but you can use it as kind of ballpark figures. And keep in mind that you have to specify um, when, whenever you want CPC data to be to be pulled in, okay, you have to specify that when you do a new search. All right, next set of columns. I'll get rid of a few again. Now we have a whole range of columns. These are um, all very similar, and I'm going to call all of them up and see if the view gets messy. But I think we should have enough space here. Here we go. And I'm going to get this one as well. And in fact, while we're at it, let's get one more. Here we go. Okay, that's the rest of the columns all called up. All right, here we go. Now we have for the keyword, we have sniper sites, Amazons, blogs, um, eBay, easy in articles, hub pages, squidoo lenses, WordPress blogs, and YouTube videos. What these uh, symbols signify is what kind of websites are ranking for these keywords. So, for example, let's use the hub pages as an example. If you see an H here, it means that on the front page for how to knit a scarf, one of the results pages is a hub pages page. Okay, Hub pages, if you're not familiar, is one of these um, content sites where you can go and create an account and write articles, write posts, um, and you get revenue share from the ads. So you can earn a bit of money by posting lots of content there. The same goes for Squidoo. And of course, I'm sure you're familiar with Easy in Articles. Let's see if we have anything. No, we don't have any Easy in Articles ranking here, but you'd see an Easy in Articles symbol here if there were an Easy in Article on the front page. Now, why is this significant? Well, if you see a Squidoo lens or a hub page or an Easy in Article ranking, on the front page for a particular keyword. That's a good sign that that's an easy keyword to rank for because these pages almost always simply rank based on the site authority, okay? It's kind of it's almost accidental rankings, quote unquote. So if you see a Squidoo lens or a hub pages page in the results, it's a good sign that you can probably knock that out. And here's what's even more fun. What you can probably go and do is you can probably create your own hub pages page and just build a few more backlinks to yours than to the one that's already ranked and knock out the one that's already ranked. Okay. That is, so it's kind of an indication that it might be really simple. A sniper site is simply signifies that there's a ranking site which has an exact match domain and not many backlinks, which is again a sign that you might be able to build a sniper site of your own and get into the top rankings somehow. Blogspot site and WordPress site that simply looks at what kind of platforms the sites are built on. A YouTube video tells you there's a YouTube video ranking, you know, there, there's YouTube results uh, in the actual search results. That can also be interesting. Again, you can go in, make your own video and see if you can bump in, uh, knock one of the videos out and replace it with yours. And what else haven't I said yet? Oh yes, Amazon and eBay. Now with Amazon and eBay, this is mainly important if you're doing, if you're looking for physical um, product keywords, right? And you want to rank a website uh, for a physical product name, then it's better if you f if you find a product that gets a a good amount of searches, and neither Amazon nor eBay are ranking for that product name. That's a really good sign. Okay. Now I'm not saying you can't outrank Amazon or eBay or, or that if you see Amazon or eBay, then it, you know, it's a losing battle or anything like that. But if you find a product name that gets searched for and Amazon is not ranking for it, that's a really good sign that you can, you have easy pickings. Okay. And that's what all of these columns are about. This is just to give you like a quick overview that can show you by the type of site ranking, um, sometimes show you some really easy pickings keywords that you can go after. And then finally, the info last changed is simply shows you how uh, current the data is that you're looking at. Um, because we have a, a database that, that saves all the keyword data. And this simply gives you an idea if you want to know exactly how old the data is.
All right, and that's all of the columns explained. Oh, actually, no, one I forgot, the words. This is simply a word count. And uh, so how many words are in the keyword? And the good thing about that is that in general, keywords with more words in them, key phrases, I should say, with more words in them are easier to optimize for than short keywords. So, you know, long tail and short tail keywords. I'm sure you've heard the expression. And one more thing I want to demonstrate is what you can do is you can filter by these columns. So you can say, I only want to see um, key phrases that have four words or more. Okay, apply this filter. And now all I'm left with is long tail keywords. And since I've also applied a filter for minimum search volume, I now have a nice little collection of long tail keywords that still get a reasonable amount of searches. To remove a filter, simply go back and untick the filter value here and the search uh, or all of the results will pop back up. Okay, and I think with that, we've looked at all of the columns and functions in here.